So welcome to the channel and in this new playlist we're going to be having a look at another great British classic, the Triumph TR6. And in this episode on the playlist, by request, we're going to have a look at setting the ignition timing using the vacuum method. One thing to note is this video is not going to go into the detail of looking at a points set up car and the complexities that that brings for the advanced curve. Uh, this car is set up with an electronic ignition so that advanced curve is preset. Uh, and can't be adjusted. So in reality, what we're doing is just adjusting the distributor uh, to get the timing right for the best possible running. Before moving on to the car to look at timing, the first thing I always do is check the spark plugs. The spark plugs I use for the car are the NGK BP6 ES spark plugs. I've always found the car runs very, very well on these. In terms of the gap, I always go for the factory specification, which you can see here is 25 thou or 0.63 millimeters. Uh, there, on the forums, when you read that, there is a, a thread that says uh, a slightly larger gap is okay as well. Some people pushing up to point, uh, 30 thou or 35. Um, but as I say, I always stick with the, the factory specification, never have an issue uh, with that. For the timing specification, that's largely going to depend on the engine. So remember, I have a 1975 UK uh, petrol injection model. So based on that, I'm going to be looking to set the car to 11 degrees before top dead center as a starting point, and then I'll fine tune the ignition timing using vacuum. To check the timing, I'm going to be using a light gun. This happens to be an AccuSpark unit available from a popular website auction site uh, for somewhere around 20 pounds or maybe uh, 25, 30 dollars. You've got the gun here, you've got the connection for earth, one for the positive battery, and of course the connection for the ignition lead. So let's put that on the car and see what we've got. The gun's now set up on the car. We've got the red on the positive terminal, black on the negative terminal, the induction coil on the number one lead, which is the lead closest to the front of the car. So we're ready to go and look at our timing. To make my life a little bit easier using the timing gun, what I've done here is mark the timing point with some white correction fluid to make that stand out with the strobe light. And then on the cam pulley itself, I've got three marks. So the center one is zero. Uh, the higher one on the camera here is four degrees uh, after top dead center. And the lower mark, I've timed that at 11 degrees before top dead center which is the, uh, the specification I'm going to be starting to, to work with. So with the engine ticking over at 850 RPM, what I can now do is bring in my timing light, put that down here, and if I turn that on, you can see now the timing marks beginning to flash. And what that's showing me Timing is set to approximately 12 degrees before top dead center. So that's a great starting point to now consider start using the vacuum. If yours was wildly aside from this, maybe three or four degrees, you can make that adjustment to 11 just to get you to a sound starting point. On any modern car, that would be enough, but there's a problem. Being a classic, it's subject to wear. Wear on the cogs, on the camshaft, wear on the chain, wear on the cam itself, can all mean that the timing you think is not actually the timing you get. And this is where setting by vacuum can help. Let's understand why. As the cylinder goes over its top dead center position, the spark from the ignition creates the bang that makes the piston go down and creates a vacuum in the induction to suck in the fuel when the explosion is in its best possible position the piston will get pushed down with maximum force and that in turn will create the highest level of vacuum if we measure that vacuum to understand where the highest possible point is we know we've got the very best timing position after we've set the timing using vacuum we have to make sure we haven't gone too far which means we might get pinking or a lean mixture on a hard acceleration. We can only do this with a road test. 
So it's for this reason that TR6s are usually best set by regressing the timing using vacuum, then going on a road test, and then advancing the timing should any pinking be experienced. To check the vacuum, I've got this vacuum gauge, and what I'm going to be doing is connecting that to the car. I purchased this off a well-known auction website for somewhere around uh, 15 pounds, so probably about $20. And what I've done is connect the vacuum pipe at the end into the T-piece uh, and put two short pipes onto it as well. So I'll show you where to connect that into the car. So on a PI unit, the vacuum is taken off the intake manifold here down to the metering unit. But if you had a carburetor version, you could equally tee into the, uh, uh, the carburetor intake in order to get your vacuum so that you could measure the timing accordingly. That's now teed in to the metering unit vacuum pipe here and then that comes up to our vacuum gauge so now we can start the car up the tick over this car is reading around 15 hg of vacuum what i'm now going to do is use a 7 16 socket to undo the distributor bolt here so that we can move it left and right slightly to see what effect that has on the vacuum so as i turn the distributor here just slightly you can see the vacuum so if I turn it anti-clockwise we can see the vacuum has gone back so we've made the ignition worse if I take it clockwise slightly you can see the ignition is increasing therefore the vacuum is going up so at its peak I can take it up to about 16 but I'm noticing now a very slight misfire so I'm going to back that down a little bit to around 15, 15 and a half. So as I turn clockwise you want to turn the ignition till it goes to its quickest, smoothest possible position maybe back off a touch and that's the point where to lock up and go for a test drive if you experience some pinking you need to back off a little bit more and that should set your timing at its most optimal position now we've got the timing adjusted it's time to get on the open road and do that final test once out on a test drive you're looking to find a steady climb and then from the bottom begin to accelerate uh, and in second and third gear accelerate hard and what you're looking to do is make sure that you haven't got any pinking which will exhibit itself as uh, what well, it seems like a dull misfire. If you do have any pinking that's a sign that you probably need to advance your ignition just slightly until that stops and then you've found the perfect point. Once again Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do subscribe. Please do like the video. Please do comment. Love reading the comments and, uh, and replying and getting involved with you all. Until next time.